Well, we want to welcome you tonight. Uh, my name is Zane Buxton. I'm serving as a very part-time pastor of this church at this point. I'm glad to see that our uh, pastor emeritus, uh, Norm Few, is here with his family supporting this. Uh, I'm thankful that all of you in the community have decided to sit down front so our people who come here regularly could have their back seats as usual. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is a community effort, really. We are glad as a church to be able to host uh, this event here tonight, but it is an event uh, that is done by the community, Cresswell Community Singers. Uh, and uh, we are, we have some baskets here and there for you to make voluntary contributions if you would like. Please know that none of those contributions are going to be kept by the church. There to support the expenses that the community singers uh, have uh, amassed you know, in terms of providing for this particular event and for their work together as community singers in general. And we're, help, we're thankful that uh, Cresswell First, the community foundation, uh, is supporting all of what we're doing here tonight. You have a program and you see all the people's names. We certainly need to thank Jackie for taking on the responsibility of uh, uh, organizing all of this and coming down, uh, coming in every Wednesday uh, to uh, lead the practices. Um, we're thankful for Mary Ellen Yost, who is a person I've not met, but her involvement with the community singers over the years and they keep her in their prayers. Uh, as they uh, practice and as they sing together. And uh, we also want to uh, thank uh, Faith Piotti, our uh, pianist here at the church, who has been doing some of the rehearsals with them, and Rebecca Laird uh, for rehearsing with them and being the accompanist tonight. And we are thankful for our um, two uh, narrators, uh, Rick Kelly, who is one of the singers, and uh, Tim Rogers, who's sitting here. Um, so with all of that, I would like to invite you to uh, pray with me. We do, in fact, rejoice with these words of John. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down one's life for one's friends. We are here to celebrate one who lay down his life, and his story has touched all of us in one way or another. And so we together are here tonight celebrating no greater love. Bless us in this time together, and as the music lifts our spirits, in Christ's name I pray it. Amen. <laughs> It was just a few days before the Passover feast. Jesus and his disciples were making their way to Jerusalem to celebrate the sacred Jewish festival. A large crowd heard that Jesus had stopped in Bethany to share a meal with his friend Mary, her sister Martha, and their brother Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. People gathered to observe this compelling prophet, 
who had demonstrated such miraculous powers. The crowd continued to grow as Jesus and his followers approached Jerusalem. As he entered the city, they took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Oh, Lord, be the 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 Lord, be the
Resounding echoes of Hosanna reverberated in the streets of Jerusalem as faithful Jewish people gathered and prepared for the Passover festivities over the following days. The day of, for Passover feast finally arrived. The disciples asked Jesus where he wanted them to go and prepare their own obser observance of the Passover. He instructed them to go into the city where they would find a man carrying a jar of water. He would show them a large upper room, furnished and ready. It was there they were to make their preparations. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples gathered and shared the Passover meal. While they were eating, he took bread, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you. 
After Jesus and the disciples finished the meal, they sang a hymn and then went out to the Mount of Olives to a place called Gethsemane. Jesus said to them, Sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him. He began to, sorrow, to be sorrowful and troubled. He said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, Jesus fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but your will be done. Being in deep anguish, Jesus prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When Jesus rose from prayer, 
he went back to his disciples. There he found them asleep from exhaustion. Suddenly, they were surrounded by a crowd who had been led to this place by Judas, one of the twelve disciples. In an ironic act of betrayal, Judas kissed Jesus on the cheek so that others could identify and seize him. The angry crowd, comprised of chief priests, officers of the temple guard, and religious elders, led Jesus away, taking him to the home of the high priest. Peter followed at a safe distance. In a trial filled with deceit and mockery, the religious leaders were seeking evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death and rid themselves of this so-called prophet. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Meanwhile, Peter had been approached in the high priest's courtyard where he was quietly sitting. You, you were with him. You are one of this man's followers. The accusations directed at Peter prompted his immediate and vehement denials. By the time morning arrived, the religious leaders had determined to put Jesus to death. They led him away and handed him over to Pilate, the governor for the region. It was the governor's custom at the Passover feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, a notorious prisoner named Barabbas was in custody. When the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which of these prisoners do you want me to release? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? The angry crowd, incited by the chief priest and religious leaders, responded, Release Barabbas. Crucify Jesus. Pilate resigned himself to the will of the people. He handed Jesus over to his soldiers, who took and flogged him, mockingly put a scarlet robe on his back, and placed a crown of thorns on his head. Then they led him away to be crucified. Jesus, this one who had been sent as God's great gift of love to the world, now stood as an outcast, sentenced to death, on a cross by the very people he had come to save. Thank you. 
Having been condemned to a criminal's death on a cross, Jesus was led to a place called Golgotha. Two other men were placed on crosses on either side of him. The soldiers, many in the crowd, and even the criminals alongside of him, mocked and derided him. He saved others, but he can't save himself. Let him come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. Let God rescue him. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the land. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud cry, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And then he breathed his last. In that moment, the words of the prophet Isaiah were fulfilled. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our inequities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the inequity of us all. This divine messenger of love has died for us.
The earth stood silent as the Savior of the world died in fulfillment of God's ultimate redemption plan. This humble man who, being in the very nature of God, had made, had made himself nothing, taking on the role of a servant, being made in human likeness. He had humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. A Roman centurion, who had been part of the execution of Jesus, was overwhelmed by what he had just witnessed. Truly, this was a righteous man. The very words of Jesus, no doubt, echoed in the hearts of many who stood at the foot of that cross and witnessed his death. Greater love has no one other than this, that one laid down his life for his friends. Thank you. 
The endless love of God spans all of eternity. It conquers hate, selfish ambitions, and senseless acts of injustice. The Romans and misguided religious leaders might have crucified the messenger that day, but they had not crushed the message nor the boundless love of God. Love's redeeming work was not yet done. It was now after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went back to look at the tomb. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat upon it. The guards were so afraid that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Go quickly and tell his disciples. Christ is risen, as he said. Sing, Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Thank you. 